in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The labor of all church workers shall never be in vain as our Father, the Father of all globally, the Covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui gives us the Global Church Workers Conference live from Taraba State, Nigeria. All church workers and ministers globally to join hands with all ministers across Taraba State, Northern Nigeria from 17 to 20 November 2022. It's our time for triumphing in ministry, even in troublous times. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kubuyi will be ministering 8 a.m. daily from Jalingo, Taraba State, to the world, via satellites and on all our social media platforms. It will be an avalanche of global expositions and revelations. Your labor will not be in vain. When we started the year 2022, you had hopes, you had desires, you had dreams. But suddenly, all over the globe, we read and hear of failures economically, politically, with climate change and security breaches here and there. And now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Today, the Lord is saying, weep not. All your tears are dried, because behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed. And it's confirmed that there's still one hope, one way, one solution, and one power that never fails. The power of Jesus Christ reverberates this November with GCK live from Adamawa State, Nigeria. The land of beauty set to beautify your life through Christ. As the covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi will touch down in Adamawa, Nigeria with a power that never fails. Healing, deliverance, salvation. November 24 to 29, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT for Sunday worship service. Young people from all levels will be empowered for excellence at the Impact Academy on November 26, 2022 at 0600 hours GMT. Ministers and professionals will be empowered for breakthrough in ministry on November 25, 26, 28 and 29 at 0600 hours GMT. Our guest gospel minister is Bob Feets. This is an avalanche of manifestation of the power that never fails for all life. Power will herald your celebration. Dr. William Kumui says, Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. GCK, the gospel to every creature. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you for our coming together. We thank you because you have started with us. And we know that you are going to continue with us. We thank you for journey mercies for your children that have come from far and near. And we know that you have brought everyone here for a purpose. Therefore, Lord, we pray that the depths of purpose, the height of purpose in your own heart, you will fulfill for every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray that no one will be here and will go back empty-handed. But that, Lord, you will open the gates of heaven. You will open the windows of heaven. And shower needed blessings upon your people in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, I pray that in this place, it will be so easy to get saved. So easy to get sanctified. And so easy to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. That Lord, at the snap of the finger, in the twinkling of an eye, as we mention the problems of your people, that all those problems will roll away in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that in, like in days of old, 
When Jesus walked the streets of Galilee and of Capernaum and he laid hands on the sick and he spoke the word of authority and he spoke the word that he brought from the Father in heaven and the effect was immediate and instantaneous. I pray that in the same way you will magnify your name, magnify your word, magnify your power in our midst in Jesus' name. And we pray, oh Lord, that none will not will, will go back without receiving something definite from you in Jesus' name. How we pray that from this very first time, your word will come to us with power. Your word will come to us with light. And all the cloud of confusion and all darkness within us, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for some people who may be here and they do not know why they are here. They do not have any kind of goal, any purpose, any request, anything they are asking from the Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that for such people, you speak to their hearts and give them a heavenly desire, heavenly goal in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are here and already they have some goals they've written on paper. They say, O oh Lord, during this time of the good spring, during this wonderful time of the Congress, this is what I want you to do for me. How I pray that you look at all those requests they are written down and you multiply them and you expand them for these people in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you transport us from the valley and you take us to the very mountain top. That Lord, like when Moses went before you to the mountain top, when he came to the children of Israel, we are told that his face was shining. He didn't even know that his face was shining. But the children of Israel will not look at his face directly. How I pray that the glory of heaven will come upon all the people here in Jesus' name. That Lord, not only that our faces will shine, our hearts will shine. Our spirits and souls will shine. Where there was weakness, before let there be courage. Where there has been unbelief, let there be faith. Where there is backsliding, bring restoration. And where there is some decidedness, indecision. Oh Lord, I pray that you will bring a firm decision in every heart and life. In Jesus' name. I pray that you transform us to people who can pray. Make prayer warriors of the people that couldn't pray before. In Jesus' name. That Lord, by the time we end this conference and this congress, every one of us will know that you have touched us. You have transformed us. And you have done more than we could ever expect from you. That Lord, at the time of testimony, that our mouths will be full of testimony in Jesus' name. We pray for our brothers and sisters that are yet to come. We pray, oh Lord, you grant them journey mercies so that they will join us here and receive of the abundance of the Lord in Jesus' name. I pray, oh Lord, that you take these leaves of mine and anoint them. That the words that come out will come anointed to the hearts of all your people here tonight in Jesus' name. I pray that even while the word of God is going on, you'll be doing the work of transformation in every heart. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I welcome you as you welcome me to the day spring. It's a wonderful time that I could be with you this year and begin with you. And I hope to stay through and be with you till the end of the program. I know it's one of the serious prayer points and prayer requests that we have uh, prayed about in all our campuses, that, um, you know, if the GS has been dragging his feet, that this time there will be a quickly fire that will keep in him and he will be with you all the time. And you know that God has answered that prayer? And, and if God has answered that prayer, you guess what? All the other prayer requests you, God has answered. So the, the songs we just listen to now, inspiring and challenging us, I believe that those songs tell us of the requests that you have already made on the various campuses and what the Lord is going to do. And the song is not just a request, it's a prayer to God, a petition to God, offering praise to God as well, that God is going to do all that you expect and much more than you expect. You do not have the program sheet with you yet, but the topic of tonight is from 
Second Kings chapter 10, sorry, Second Kings chapter 2, and in verse 10, and he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me, when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. The topic that we are speaking about tonight is, If thou see me. As Bible students, you may know that these were the words that Elijah spoke to Elisha. It was the very last time that Elijah was going to be with Elisha. And Elisha knew about it. And Elisha had had a big request in his mind. Something that he had been thinking about, meditating upon, turning over and over in his own heart. What the Lord will do for him through Elijah, his master. And eventually the day came when Elijah was to be taken away from him. And he had been going, I'll read a story to you later, from one place to the other. And he was following as somebody that wanted something in particular. He wasn't just following. He wasn't just seeing him off. He wasn't just following to say goodbye. But he was following so that he will get a definite thing from his master, Elijah. And eventually Elijah said, You ask me what I will do for you before I am taken away from you. And then Elisha asked what he asked. I'll show you that later. And then Elijah told him, you have asked a hard thing, a great thing, a seemingly impossible thing, an incredible thing. You have asked a big request, a request bigger than your little life, bigger than your little family, bigger than your tribe, bigger than the nation of Israel. A request bigger than all the people that have been before you, what they have asked, a request greater than what I have myself. He said, you have asked a hard thing. Then he gave a condition. He said, nevertheless, it's hard, nevertheless, it's big, nevertheless, it's unprecedented, nevertheless. Nobody had asked of this before, nevertheless. You see, that shows us something. However big your request may be, however great your demand may be, however unprecedented your prayer may be, there is a nevertheless. If you can fulfill the condition, if you can say, God, I know what I'm asking, I know how great it is, I know it's of great consequence, and I know the impact that I will make if I have my request made, then I'm going to fulfill the condition that you make yourself a candidate for the supernatural. A candidate for the spectacular. A candidate for something unprecedented. He said, nevertheless, if thou see me. As a student of the Bible, you need to know that that little word, if, appears very frequently in the Bible. In fact, it appears all great men of God, one time or the other, in giving promises to people coming from God, have used the word if, and Jesus Christ himself. Use that little word, if. And when you come to Paul the Apostle, you come to the Colossians and other parts of the epistle, he used the word, if. And it is always telling us that God is able, if you, as a human being, will fulfill the condition. There is a divine part. You see, God is sovereign. God is powerful. God is mighty. His promises are unchanging. There is no measure of his power. There is no measure of what he can do. But there is an if attached to it. On the side of the Almighty, because he's divine, because he's sovereign, because he's creator, because he can do all things for all people at all times, there is no problem with him. On the side of man, there is an if. And it is that if that makes one a giant, makes the other a grasshopper. It is that if that makes somebody a victor and makes the other one a victim. It is that if that makes someone a person that makes a mark in history. It is that if that makes another person like the bird flying in the air, not making any mark at all. It is that if that makes one a conqueror and makes the other fellow a neighbor sitting by that individual a defeated fellow. It is that if that makes one person to be an achiever and makes the other fellow a mediocre. And so Elijah said unto Elisha, there is an if 
God is able. He can do abundantly, above, exceedingly, above all things to think and ask. But then there is an ink on the side of man. If you will fulfill that condition, it says, Say thou see me, then it will be given unto you. If not, if not, if not, it shall not be so. It's very deep when you think of the doctrines of the Bible. It's very deep when you think of the free moral agency of man. It's very deep when you think of the condition of blessing. It's very deep when you think of the divine human partnership. Here is God, and he limits himself to your own fulfilling of the condition. Here is God able to do all things, and he's even able to do all things even now, but he's going to wait for you until you fulfill the condition. You see, this congress could be just another congress for a lot of people. It could be just another congress in the, in the sense that we came before, we've had all that before, we had that kind of singing before, or it's the same kind of fellowship. We hear that kind of message in a uh, fellowship, um, you know, on the campus, or we've seen all that before. I knew that verse before, even that message, I had a similar message to that before, you know, it could be just another congress for some people. On the other hand, it could be a gateway to the accomplishment of God's purpose for your life. If you will follow after Elisha, and you will see him the way you follow after Elijah, and you follow after Christ like that, and you say, in this Congress, something definite must be done. Elisha punishes an example of a persevering soul. You see, it is a persevering soul. It's not the genius that gets the mark. If a person happens to be a genius but lazy, but prayerless, but will not lay hold on the promises of God without giving up, he can land, you know, at the back bench. But if a person even it might not be a genius, but then he has perseverance. Perseverance. He prays, he obeys God, he perseveres in the things that he needs to do. And he tells God, like Jacob, I will not let you go except you bless me. He might not be a genius. He might not be a person who will be looking up to that he will do, accomplish great, great things. But because of his persistence, he's able to really accomplish more than the other fellow that appears to be a genius, but then is not persevering. And Elisha gives us the example of a persevering soul. He was called. He responded. He followed. He prayed. He set his eyes on the master. He received his heart's desire, and then he filled a vacancy that no one else could fill. You know, there are a lot of Christians in our nation, born again people, and a lot of Christians perhaps on your campuses. But you see, the majority of those Christians, we can easily replace them. There's nothing that some of those people are doing that another Christian cannot just uh, get into their shoes and replace them. But there are some few people, those persevering souls, the people that distinguish themselves in the kingdom of God, they are hard to replace. Hard to replace. And when you think about Elisha, Elisha was a person like that. He filled a vacancy that no one else could fill. You think of the mighty deeds that Elijah had done. Elijah influenced the lives of little children, the lives of widows, the lives of women, the lives of the whole nation, the life of Ahab, and the life of a lot of people. He made a mark in his generation. And now Elijah was going. Who will feel the place of Elijah? Very, very difficult to feel that kind of place. Because you see, his power was God. The anointing of God upon him, his knowledge of the divine, his intimacy with the Almighty, his fearlessness of Ahab, his boldness in that kingdom that gave itself to the worship of Baal, his authority over those false prophets that tried to bring down fire from heaven and they could not do it. Who will replace Elijah? That was the question. And Elisha stepped out and he said, I will. And he said, Look at Elijah. Look at his life. Look at his anointing. Look at his power. Look at his accomplishment. Who can replace Elisha? Elijah. Elisha said, I can. In his own heart. In his own mind. He took that decision. I am going to fill a vacancy that no one else can fill. 
My challenge to you is this. What kind of Christian do you want to be? A Christian that, you know, you cannot be in a special vacancy. You cannot do anything that is out of the ordinary. You are one of the run and meal Christians. You are one of the ordinary ones. You are one of the, one of the Dicks and Harrys of the community and of the Christian fold. My challenge to you is not to make this Congress to do something in your heart that then you go back to your locations and you are able to fill a vacancy that no one else could fill. I know that you may be tired because you're uh, taking a long journey to come, but all the same, in this first message, I want to briefly talk to you on three points. Number one, spiritual qualities in Elisha. Spiritual qualities in Elisha. And as I look at these qualities one by one, I'm expecting that you will look at your life and say, do I have those qualities? Are those qualities found in me? I tell you this, if these qualities are found in you, you may be that person that the eyes of Israel are upon you because you will be able to fill a vacancy that no one else could fill. Number two, hindrances overcome by Elisha. Hindrances overcome by Elisha. Oh yes, Elisha had hindrances. But you know what he did? He did not allow those hindrances, those stones, to become stumbling blocks. He made them stepping stones. You see, the problem with some young people is that they do not know that everyone has a share of adversity, of affliction, of opposition, of difficulties, of challenges. You see, the majority of young people, they allow those hindrances and those oppositions and those adversities to become a stumbling block. And then they say, I cannot go forward. I cannot do any other thing. I cannot move on. I cannot serve the Lord anymore. I cannot pray anymore. I cannot do Christian service anymore. I cannot do the things I wanted to do before. Oh, when I started this Christian life, I had a big plan, a big goal. I thought I was going to be an achiever. I thought I was going to make it. But you see, look at my opposition. Look at the adversity that I have. Look at the affliction that I have. Look at the sicknesses that I have. Look at all these hindrances in my life. I'm sorry I will not be able to make it anymore. Then you, you get out of the way. There are some people that are coming behind you. And they have those same afflictions. They have said those same adversities. And they have said those same oppositions. And those same persecutions. They have them. In fact, they have some of the things you have seven times fold. And yet they said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That I will overcome. That I will be more than a conqueror. Those hindrances are there. Those oppositions are there. Those persecutions are there. They will not make me to stumble. I'm going to step on them and I'm going to march forward. And if you are like that here today, then we've got another Elisha that will not allow hindrances to hinder him from getting... Think about it. He wanted a double portion. He looked at Elijah, and he looked at the Spirit of God upon Elijah. And you know, if you just had the portion of the Spirit of God of Elijah upon you, you would have thought that is enough. But this man said, I know that could have been enough for the other people, for the other people that do not want a big plan, a great goal. That's not enough for me. I want a double portion. And you think of something, the devil is going to challenge that every inch of the way. You want to serve God? You want a double portion? You want to affect your campus for Christ? You want to stand up bold and firm and erect? You want to square your shoulders and say, here I stand. Though there may be as many devils, as many demons, and there are tiles on the ground, I am going to get to my goal. If you are a person like that, the devil is going to challenge you every inch of the way. But you know, the people that are conquerors, like Elisha, they, do, they are not timid, they are not uh, trembling, and they are not weak. They are not people you can intimidate because of difficulty. In fact, they rejoice at difficulty. They say, I like to fight, especially fighting against the devil, wrestling against principalities and powers. You know, some people, if they have little dream, if they have, you know, some of these conditions and they have, you know, these little problems and there is an evil spirit or a particular demon and they couldn't sleep in the night and they have this problem and this problem, then they pack their load they say, bye bye, Christian people. I thought I will serve the Lord, but it was not the way I expected. I thought if I came to the Lord Jesus, 
Jesus Christ. There will be no difficulty and there will be no problem. Look at it. I couldn't sleep last night. And when we were coming on the way, we had a little accident. In fact, if you look at my hand now, there's a little bruise there. I thought I'd be able to say, but I cannot stay. Well, what a pity for you. But you know, the people that are going to overcome and the people that are going to do something, something like Elisha did, they are the people that will say, I like that. I like that opposition. I like that adversity. I like that trouble. I want to fight for the devil. You sent a demon. That's not enough. You devil, calm yourself and let me test my shield of faith on you. Those are the people that will make it. Those are the people that will make a mark in this, our generation. Look at our country. Look at your campuses. And look at your cultism. And look at all the things. You know, some students who are Christians, who are, they will say, well, I'm not going to get involved with anybody. The drunkard's club is there. And all those occultic people are there. And all those other you know, students that if you get to their room, it's like you get to the room of a herbalist. And then they say, I'm not going to witness at all because I don't want them to put anything on me. We need an Elisha on your campus. That will go to every one of those rooms and the moment you appear like this, all the things they put in those calabash, everything will become like water. Yeah. And this is what we want for this Congress to do it for every one of us. And it will do so in Jesus' name. Yeah. Well, overcoming hindrances. Hindrances overcome by Elisha. Number three, the results of Elisha's perseverance. The results of Elisha's perseverance. Now we go back to point one. Spiritual qualities in Elisha. We're going to First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. And I'm reading there from verse 18. Yet I have left, I have left me 7,000 in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed unto Baal. And every mouth which had not kissed him. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shephat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by and cast his mantle upon him, and he left the oxen, and ran after Elijah, and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again. What have I to do? What have I done unto thee? And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their, feet, their, their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did it, and they arose and went after Elijah, and ministered unto him. Here we find the call of Elisha. I want to get you back to the story of Elijah himself. Elijah was that great man of God who manifested the power of God and served the Lord in Israel at the time of Ahab. The kingdom of Ahab was so evil. It was so bad. There was the Baal worship. And because of that, famine came upon the land. It was a great, great suffering. Eventually, you know the story perhaps, that Elijah went to the mount, to the top of the mount, Mount Carmel. And he prayed and the fire came down and burnt the sacrifice. Eventually, all those prophets of Baal, false prophets, were destroyed. And then Jezebel threatened and said, God do so to me. If by this time tomorrow I do not kill Elijah. Because of that, Elijah ran. He ran away. And he was sleeping somewhere. And the angel of God came to him and said, Arise and eat. Because the journey is too far for you. And eventually the Lord met him. And the Lord said, What are you doing here, Elijah? A person like you? Should you ever yield to discouragement? And that's the same question I'm asking you. You children of God. You who are indwelt by Christ. You are saved. You are sanctified. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. What are you doing in a corner? With discouragement, thinking I cannot go on anymore. The enemies are too many for me. Opposition is too great for me. Eventually the Lord told him, he said, your ministry has not come to an end yet. You will anoint Elisha. You will anoint Jehu. You will anoint Azael. 
And then they will continue the work. He that escapes the sword of Jehu, Asahel will slay. He that escapes the sword of Asahel, then Elisha will slay. He was just coming from that place where God told him he had 7,000 people left in Israel, the people that are not bowed down to Baal. And then one of those 7,000 people, Elisha, he met him, and Elijah threw his mantle upon him. It wasn't a one hour message. It was just the mantle thrown, up, thrown upon him. It wasn't a lot of question and answer. It wasn't a lot of counseling and pleading and saying, Elisha, would you give yourself? Would you come to the Lord? Would you serve the Lord? Would you consider following after me? No, not at all. You see, if we're really going to follow the Lord, we do not need this long kind of pleading and counseling and trying to help us to say, we oh, must try to serve the Lord. It is wonderful to serve the Lord. Immediately, Elisha responded, what a good quality in the life of Elisha. But then, immediately, he told Elijah, I said, Elijah, wait for me. I need to go back home and just say goodbye to my mother and my father because I said I was going to the farm. If I left from here and followed you, they wouldn't know what has happened to me. Therefore, I'll go back home and I'll just say goodbye and kiss daddy and mommy and then I'll be following after you. And Elijah said, what have I got to do with you? What have I done to you? You go back and do whatever you want to do. And he went back. He killed the oxen that was used to plow. He, then he burnt or he boiled the fle flesh with the instrument that was used in plowing. And when he burnt all that and boiled all that and gave them to it, he said, bye-bye. And off he went. Now, what qualities do you see in these things I told you concerning Elisha? Number one. Burning the bridges behind you. Burning the bridges behind you. You see, if you do not burn those bridges and come to a point of no return and say, I'm following after Christ, I've repented, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the bridge that I took that brought me to this side, I burn it off. Now, you may know this story. It was a great general conducting an army and they were on the losing side it appeared and then he was controlling that army telling them that they were going to win and then they crossed a particular bridge when he crossed that bridge then he blew up that bridge after they all crossed and he told them there is no way to go back we either win or we die and tell tell me the result they won because they burnt the bridges behind them you see, there are people that have some names for the world. They have not burnt those bridges. They are not all and all out and out Christians. Because of that, whenever there is a little difficulty, they have a way of going back. But the first quality you find in the life of Elisha is that he burnt the bridge behind him. And that is what I challenge you to do. It may be the bridge, the link between you and a boyfriend. And it may be hard. And you have to just look at that bridge and look at that link and look at those, those photographs and look at those letters and say, by the grace of God, I know this thing is going to hinder me from making it to the very end. I burn the bridges behind me. It may be that you have some association with occultism, with evil power, and now you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you spend so much money to be able to get those books and those materials, and you say, I come to the Lord, I'm going to burn the bridges behind me. And the moment you do it, you know that you are really on your way to the kingdom of God. It may be some other things in your life that you just say, this one cannot go with me to the kingdom of God. I have to repent of this. I have to give this up. I burn the bridges behind me. That's coming for you. So repentance and consecration dedication to the Lord that you just say I give myself to the Lord I will never look back number two freedom from parental and peer pressure then you can see he did his parents goodbye and he said there is now another control in my life there is now another motivating factor in my life you see he was a man that was so linked with his parents before but then his parents might not understand this call of God coming upon him. And then in what he did, he burnt the bridges then, he got free from parental pressure. And he got free from the pressure of his peers, of his colleagues. You need to do that in your life. You see what does not allow some people to make progress in this Christian journey of faith is that they have a lot of pressure. 
the classmates and the neighbors and the age mates and all the other people that do not have the vision of heaven all the other people that have not heard the call of Jesus Christ all the other people that do not know they do not evaluate everything they do in the light of eternity because of that those pressures are upon them if you are really going to be like Elisha and you are going to have the power of God upon you you will need to set yourself free from parental pressure and peer pressure number three prompt response to God's call now can't you see the way he responded he was in the field and then Elijah came to him, threw the mantle upon him, and he responded immediately. That is the wonderful thing we find about the people that serve God and they have a ministry of excellence. They are the people that respond promptly, immediately, willingly, without question when the Lord calls them. You think about Abraham, that's what you find. You think about Moses, that's what you'll find. You think about Joshua, that is what you will find. You think about David, that is what you will find. The people that will respond unto the Lord immediately. You think about Peter, James, John, Andrew. You think about Matthew. And you think about Paul the Apostle. These were people that made a mark in history in their generation. And what do you learn of them? They responded immediately to the call of God. The Lord is calling you to repentance if you have not repented. And it's a beautiful, wonderful thing where you can respond immediately and say, I won't delay till tomorrow. When it calls you to holiness, because it says we are called unto holiness, not unto uncleanness. When you respond immediately, and it doesn't take you six months, one year, again, can we be holy? Can we be righteous? Can we do without committing sin? Can we live a life glorifying to God? You respond immediately to the call of holiness. Number four, genuine love. Supreme love for God. Genuine love and supreme love for God. Now you can tell. He loved God more than the cattle, more than the oxen, more than the farm, more than all that he had. He immediately received the call of God. He just showed his love unto God more than all the things that he possessed. You know that there are some people, the only thing that is hindering them is their kind of dress. What they say, you know, if I give my life to the Lord, I see those other Christians on our campus, and I see the way they dress. And I'm going to have to give up this kind of dress and that kind of look and, you know, the way I, the way I like to do things, I'm going to kind of give all that up because they do not love God more than that kind of thing, more than their jewelry and more than their farming and more than their airdo and more than the worldliness in their lives because they do not love God above all those things, they're not able to respond. They'll be dragging their feet. And you really cannot pin them down and say, can't you come to the Lord fully today? They say, I'm still considering, but you know the quality of Elisha. He loved God above everyone else, everything else, above his own very soul. Well, Jesus Christ had not come at that time. But you know the message Jesus Christ gave later, that if anyone will come after me, I will not hate father, mother, child, and also brother, sister, wife, everything, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. That if you are going to be his disciple, you must forsake all things, and then come and follow me. That's exactly what Elisha did. He forsook everything because of his genuine love and supreme love to God and followed after the Lord without looking back. Number five is humility and servant attitude. Humility and servant attitude. And you will see a man that owned 12 yoke of oxen. He was a prosperous man. A wealthy man. He was a man of profession. And this call of God came upon him. And it wasn't even explained to him. And he wasn't told what the future will hold. Elijah just threw the mantle upon him and left. And immediately he said, I'm following on. And then he became just a servant. If you look at Second Kings chapter 3 and verse 11. You will see what this man of property, man of wealth, man of prosperity, man of great standing, man of status. You will see what he later began to do. In Second Kings chapter 3 verse 11. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that will inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the kings of Israel, um, Israel's servants, uh, the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. 
you see that he let all that palm all the yoke of oxen let everything and he came to do the work of his servant just pouring water on the hands of elijah isn't that humility you see what hinders some people from following the lord and from making the mark in life is that they're so proud they're so full of themselves and he'll say i can't do that i can't eat that i can't sleep there what kind of a congress is this don't these people know me i can stay in this place i can't sit so long like this i don't allow people to just dribble me around sit down there stand up there go this way now uh, the food is not ready yet now and nobody should go to the cafeteria nobody should do i don't allow people to command me and dribble me like that i am the son and the daughter of so and so well sit down there you will miss the blessing of elisha but you know elisha was so humble and he had this servant attitude and servant spirit and was willing to just pour water on elijah's hand number six singleness of purpose singleness of purpose is serving the lord that's what you will find in elisha that he had this singleness of purpose he was going to follow the lord through and he wasn't going to allow any distraction at all let me now go to point two what were the hindrances that tried to hinder him from getting the best he wanted from god hindrances our ability to overcome determines what we receive from god and what we do in life if you are not able to overcome hindrances you will not be able you will not amount to much in life if you allow the pebbles of life the stones that people throw at you if you allow those things to stop your onward journey you will not be able to reach your destination if elisha had allowed the hindrances on his way the account of his life would have been very very different let's now read together from second kings chapter 2 second kings chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord will take up Elijah into heaven by whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, Tarry here, stay here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. And they, and they two went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to build a pharaoh. And they two stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me, when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. What hindrances have you seen there? As I read that passage to you, seven hindrances. Number one, apparent discouragement from the leader. You see, Elijah was a master. He was a leader. And Elijah should have been encouraging him, saying, You know that we are having the last meeting together today? And I must now teach you some of the doctrines I have not taught you. I must now tell you some of the revelations I have not revealed unto you. 
I must now tell you some of the plans God has told me about you before I came to call you, which I have not told you. I must now tell you the big plan of God that God has for Israel, which you are supposed to carry out. Elijah should have been talking to him, telling him that, you know, I'll be going away. Make sure that you set that in order, put that in order. That Assyrian king might will come as a real great problem. Make sure that you have boldness and faith and fearlessness. And also the kings of Israel, you know that I battle with all those prophets of Baal. Make sure that you do not allow them to intimidate you. You should have been giving him the encouraging words, the party was the last word. But Elijah never did anything like that. Elijah just said, Elisha, stay here. Appreciate your desire and your honestness and your eagerness, but uh, you know, you don't have the talent. Go and join another part. You get to another part and you say, I want to join those people who can do a little bit of writing and, you know, so that way I can contribute to this area and that area. And you say, what do you study, by the way? You say, I study mathematics, so you know a lot of those people that have a lot of equations in the head, but their grammar is another story. And then they give you something to write and in one single paragraph, there are so many grammatical mistakes and they say, brother, uh, we know you have a genuine heart, you really want to serve the Lord, but this is not your field. And so discouragement comes from every direction, and you say, what am I going to do? Say, they don't want me, and you give up. That's why we have, we don't have enough Elishas today. But you know, Elisha made up his mind when Elijah said, stay here, because the Lord had sent me to Bethel, he said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth. You listen to that, nothing concerning Elisha, not if I am well, not if I am happy, as the Lord liveth, and the Lord is living, and as I so liveth, if God is alright and you are alright, whatever is happening to me, I'm following you. You see, there are people that, if they are thinking of, I will do this if I am well, I will do this if I'm happy, I will do this if nobody offends me, I will do this if they give me chance, me, me, I, I, mine, all the time. But Elisha will not refer to himself, only the Lord and his master, only the Lord and his leader. He will not allow discouragement to come his way. Those are the people that can make it in life. Number two, you see, talkative means ill-timed discussions can make a person to miss the best of God. Do you see that everywhere that they go to, there were some sons of the prophet, and they wanted to discuss with Elisha. And he said, do you know the Lord is taking your master away from your head today? He said, I know it will your peace. There's no time for discussion now. There are people that talk too much. They talk too much. And they talk the grace of God in their lives away. They talk the earnestness and the zeal and the fire of God in their lives away. You see, as we come to this Congress in the hostel, there may be people that will, they have a lot of stories to tell. What happened on that campus? What happened to the lecturers? What happened to this uh, community? What happened to the Christian Union? What happened to the Night Base? What happened to Deeper Life Campus Fellowship? What happened to the SCM? What happened to this and that? They have a lot of stories to tell. No time to pray, no time to consecrate, no time to read the Bible. Talkativeness can deprive you of the great things that the Lord wants to do in your life. Ill times discussions. The discussions that wouldn't help them in making the onward journey that they ought to make. Number three, self indulgence. Unwillingness to follow the hard path. You see, there was no bicycle, there was no motorcycle, there was no car, there was no taxi. And it just went from place to place. And we're not even told that they stopped to eat, by the way. Wasn't that hard? Physically. Just these two people taking that journey on and on and on. And you know, sometimes when you are going with somebody, you are going from Gilgal to Bethel. You are going from Bethel to Jericho. You are going from Jericho to Jordan. And you, you will not even discuss anything at all. He is just going and going. And you are just following after him. No discussion at all. Just to make the condition of the, the atmosphere to be light. No discussion at all. No food. No discussion. No resting by the way. No encouragement at all. And yet Elisha followed through. How I pray for you that you will have these qualities in your life that you will not allow self-indulgence or your willingness to follow the hard path to hinder you. I believe God wants to do a great thing in this Congress. And I believe He wants to do it in your life. And the Lord can so pour the resources of heaven upon every soul, upon every heart, if we will allow Him, if we're going to make a covenant with the Lord at this very first meeting, this very first night, that we're not going to allow any hindrance. And I believe the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Number four, physical hardship. Physical hardship. 
He didn't allow that. You see, as we come to uh, this uh, place, although this place is much better than it used to be, but all the same, there might be some kind of physical hardship on uh, some of us. You know, there are some of us that like to take a bath three times a day. Uh, some of us take a bath two times a day. And sometimes, uh, you know, as you come over here to you know, this Congress, uh, you may not get all that water. You say, what? So I will not be able to bath uh, three times a day. I didn't say that. I said you may not. You may, you may not. But in case you do not have all the water you need, will you allow that to hinder your progress in the spirit, on the spiritual side? You know, there are some people, they, they like to eat a lot. They take breakfast and just a two, about two hours later, they may take biscuits or snacks. And then another hour, they may drink coke. Another hour, they drink another thing. And then when they eat their lunch, they want dessert, they want this and that. And if that is not there, they have a problem. And all that may not be there at this Congress. I hope you will not allow the physical hardship to hinder you. You will get the best from God. Number five, lack of vision and strong desire. Lack of vision and strong desire. Didn't you see that in all the songs of the prophets that came to Elisha? They had no vision. They had no strong desire. They knew that Elijah was going to be taken away from them that day. They never made any request to Elijah. They had no vision. They had no desire at all. But in the case of Elisha, he had vision. He had a strong desire. Number six, distraction. Or what you may want to call side attractions. Distractions. Or side attractions. When these sons of the prophets came unto him, and I said, Do you know the Lord will take your master away from your head today? If it was a person that could be sidetracked, he should have been asking them, How did you know that? Did you have a dream? Did you have a vision? Did you have a trance? Did you have did you hear an audible voice? How did, what method of revelation did God communicate that to you? Now you see there are some people they just like knowledge and they want to know the various kinds of vision, night vision, day vision, revelation and trance and everything. If Elisha had stayed discussing the mode of communication, divine human communication with those people, Elijah would have gone. But he said, no time for distraction now. No time for discussion now. My eyes are set upon a goal. Here we are tonight. Are your eyes set upon a goal? Are you looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith? And you will not allow any side attraction to hinder you. Number seven, prayerlessness. Prayerlessness. You see, when Elijah said, ask what you want that I may give unto you, then he asked him, do you have any request at all? Are you praying for anything at all? Are you making a definite request? Or are you just saying, oh well, God bless me. Oh God, whatever you know is good for me, give it to me. Well, you have read the Bible. You have seen some heroes of faith in the Bible. You have seen some warriors in the Bible. You have seen some people that I told you that they are very, very hard to replace. And see those people in the Bible, Abraham, the friend of God, very hard to replace. Moses, the man of God, the meekest of them all, that had great power, authority in the land of Egypt as well as in the wilderness. Even bringing water out of the rock. You have seen such an example. You can't say, oh Lord, I pick an example and this is what I want my life to be in the spirit of the Lord. We have seen Joshua. Uh, who faced the captain of the host and said, Are you for us or with us for our adversaries? And he says, I'm the captain of the host of the Lord. And he bowed before him. And you've seen that man as he went to Jericho and Ai and conquered all those seven nations and divided the land to the children of Israel. You've seen David, that just by playing the harp, evil spirit went away from Saul. You've seen Jonathan with the armor bearer, only two of them, going to the enemy camp, saying, Because I believe the Lord is able to win the battle for us, either by few or by many. You've seen people like uh, Paul the Apostle in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, that will say, None of these things move me, neither can I my life dear unto me, that I might finish my race, my course with joy. You've heard his testimony when he said, I've finished the course, I've run the race. Now, a crown of righteousness is laid up for me, not for me only, but for all them that love the Lord. You've seen Peter and John, as they said, Silver and gold have I known, but what I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And that person that was born lame, he just rose up and began to walk. And you are seeing in the lives of all those apostles how they charge them that have women strictly commanded you. You should not preach in this name, but behold, you have filled Jerusalem with all your doctrine. And they said, Look to it, because we will rather obey God more than man. We will speak of the things we have heard and seen. You have seen people that have been mightily used of God in that generation.
generation and in this generation and you have no desire you don't want to be like one of those people you don't want to say oh god i want my life to make a mark on my campus and when i come out of campus with jesus studies i want my life to make a mark and don't you have something to pray for as we are here there is salvation to pray for there is sanctification to pray for there is the holy ghost baptism to pray for there is a double anointing to pray for there are the gifts of the spirit to pray for there is a wisdom from god to pray for because uh, solomon said oh lord you have given me the kingdom you have given a son to david to reign in the house of israel but then i don't have any wisdom to cry that to control this multitude of people that are beyond numbering and then god gave him wisdom and even the things that he didn't ask for don't you need wisdom don't you need some things from god i believe that nobody will be prayerless in this congress that you will hold on to the hands of the altar and you will say like jacob i will not let you go except you bless me it is that kind of prayer that will open the heavens it is that kind of prayer that will shower showers of blessings upon us and i believe it's going to be so now what was the result the result of elisha's perseverance the result of elisha's perseverance in verse 11 second kings chapter 2 from verse 11 and it came to pass as they as they still went on and touch you see after they crossed uh, they crossed uh, jordan now they started talking and told that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and elijah went all by wild wind into heaven and elijah saw it and he saw it and he saw him and then he cried my father my father the chariot of israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces and he took up also the mantle of elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of jordan and he stood and he took the mantle of elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said where is the lord god of elijah and when he also was meeting the waters, they were parted hither and thither. And Elisha went over. I pray you will go over. Yeah. And it says, And when the sons of the prophets, which were to be what Jericho saw him, they said, Listen to this, they said, This, the, this was the old testimony, they said, The spirit of, of Elijah does rest on Elisha. He got what he wanted. Will you get what you want? What was the result in Elisha's life? Our time is one number one, outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon him. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon him. Number two, cleansing ministry for the city. You read that later in this chapter, this chapter two. They said the situation of this city is good, but the water of the land is barren. And so he cleansed that city. He cleansed that water. There was no death anymore. Number three, unprecedented prayer power. When you look at the life of Elisha after that time, you see unprecedented prayer power. Number four, manifestation of the operations of the gifts of the Spirit. When you, uh, you can read on your own chapter 6 and 7 of 2 Kings, you see those two chapters, you have gifts of the Spirit being manifested and operated. In fact, all the gifts you find in the life of Elisha, except speaking in tongues and interpretation, which were reserved for the New Testament dispensation. Number four, spectacular ministry recognized by the enemy. In Second Kings chapter 8, verses 7 to 9, the king of Assyria was sick, and he wasn't, uh, he wasn't an Israelite, but then he sent a servant unto Elisha. He said, go and ask him, I know he will tell you whether I will get well or not. He had a respected ministry. He recognized ministry, even by nations outside the nation of Israel. Number six, consistent life of purity and power. Check up in the life of Elisha. You don't find immorality, impurity. You don't find sin. He had a consistent life of purity and power. And something will interest you, which is number seven, continuation of ministry after years of active service. You see, he had years of active service. Till the very time he died, he was serving the Lord. And then he died and he was buried. In the grave that he was buried, and that grave happens to be open. And his bones were still there. 
They were carrying this dead man. And as they were running, they, they, saw, uh, they, they, they saw a gang that was after them. So they dropped that dead man upon the bones of Elisha, who had died some time before. And when this dead man touched the bones of Elisha, he rose up, he was raised from the dead. He had a continuation of ministry, even after years of active service. Do you know some students, they might be very active on the campus. But then, after the campus uh, ministry and Christian service, uh, during the youth service, you never hear about them. And if you meet them, anyone you say, uh, what are you doing for the Lord now? Oh, he will say, I'm looking for a job. I don't have time. Do you go to church? I don't have time. Do you read the Bible? I don't have time. Ah. But on the campus, you are doing this and doing that. Well, that was, you know, those wonderful student days. But now, you know, since I came out, uh, things have been different. Not Elisha. I pray that you will be like Elisha. Already today you are seeing that there's a condition. Conditions for receiving God's best. At this Congress, we have God's best awaiting every one of us. But the condition is, if you will see the Lord, if you will see the Master, if you will hear the promises, and you will hold on persistently saying, I will pray to until my hand will reach the blessing, then it will be so. But if not, then it will not be so. What is your desire during this Congress? What do you really have as a request before the Lord? Why are you here? And what are you willing to hold on to the Lord so that you will say, God must do this for me? Is there a besetting sin that you want to conquer? Is there a particular weight that is dragging you down? And you are saying that that weight during this Congress must be blown away from my life. Do you want purity, holiness, sanctification, a kind of purity that when you get to the midst of people, they will recognize you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world? Do you want the power of God to come upon you and to blow in a dynamic way like a dynamite to blow off every weakness in your life that there will be no weakness anymore you'll be so strong in the Lord you'll be able to challenge anything anyone that will confront you after this congress I believe that if you will give yourself to the Lord like Elisha received a double portion a double portion is waiting for you why don't you rise up and say Lord I'm a candidate for the double portion I will not be a mediocre, I will be a conqueror. I will not be a victim, I will be a victor. Yes, I will overcome. I will not allow anything to hinder me. Not sin, not Satan, not self, nothing, whatever. I am going to overcome. Don't sleep, pray. Why are you here? Why did you come? What do you want? What is your request? You want to be an overcomer? Overcome sin, overcome the flesh, overcome the world? You want to be like Elisha? Like Elisha, do you have the spiritual qualities? Have you burnt the bridge behind you? Have you burnt the bridge behind you? Have you burnt the bridge behind you? Have you repented? Are you consecrating yourself to the Lord? Are you free from the pressure, pressure, pressure of parents and peers and colleagues? Are you so much afraid to take a decision because of what my friends will say? What my colleagues will say? What my classmates will say? What mommy will say? What daddy will say? You are not free yet? You are not free yet? The quality of a person that will have the double portion is the one that is free from the pressure, the pressure of people. Do you love God supremely? Loving God above yourself. Loving God above your friends. Loving God above the world. Loving God above everything and everything you can think about. Are you humble? Do you have the servant attitude and the servant spirit? Are 
Are you willing to take a humble place? Are you willing to take a low place? And say, I don't, I don't, I don't mind what people say about me. I don't mind if people push me, if they tread upon me. I'm willing to take a low place. Will you allow any hindrance to your life? Will you allow any hindrance to your life? Is talk achievements the major problem of your life? Talking and talking and talking and talking. Are you going to allow anything to discourage you? Are you going to allow physical hardship to hinder you from getting the best from God? Be like Elisha. And the results of your perseverance will be wonderful. What do you want from the Lord? Are you satisfied the way you are? Don't you want a greater infilling of the Spirit of God more than what you have got? Can you be satisfied without the double portion? The double portion, the double portion. as much as she know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The labor of all church workers shall never be in vain as our father, the father of all globally, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui gives us the Global Church Workers Conference live from Taraba State, Nigeria. All church workers and ministers globally to join hands with all ministers across Taraba State, Northern Nigeria from 17 to 20 November 2022. It's our time for triumphing in ministry, even in troublous times. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kubuhi will be ministering 8 a.m. daily from Jalingo, Taraba State, to the world, via satellites and on all our social media platforms. It will be an avalanche of global expositions and revelations. Your labor will not be in vain. When we started the year 2022, you had hopes, you had desires, you had dreams, but suddenly, all over the globe, we read and hear of failures economically, politically, with climate change and security breaches here and there. And now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Today, the Lord is saying, weep not. All your tears are dried because, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the roots of David, 
has prevailed. And it's confirmed that there's still one hope, one way, one solution, and one power that never fails. The power of Jesus Christ reverberates this November with GCK Live from Adamawa State, Nigeria. The land of beauty set to beautify your life through Christ. As the covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi will touch down in Adamawa, Nigeria with a power that never fails. Healing, deliverance, salvation. November 24 to 29, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT for Sunday worship service. Young people from all levels will be empowered for excellence at the Impact Academy on November 26, 2022 at 0600 hours GMT. Ministers and professionals will be empowered for breakthrough in ministry on November 25, 26, 28 and 29 at 0600 hours GMT. Our guest gospel minister is Bob Feetz. This is an avalanche of manifestation of the power that never fails for all life. Power will herald your celebration. Dr. William Kumui says, Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. GCK, the gospel to every creature.